Uh, I'm a monetary economist. What's your idea of perfect happiness? My own, my own perfect happiness um, is uh, sitting alone um, in the woods with all my books. What is the trait you most deplore in yourself? The trait I most deplore? Um, well, our virtues are our vices, so I think, I think sort of a certain monomaniacal quality, focusing on one thing and, and then getting irritated when other things distract me. <laughs> That's certainly what irritates most people about me. My wife, for example. What do you consider yes. the most overrated virtue? Is cleverness. What do you most value in your friends? Deadfastness. What is the most important skill to be a good economist? The most important skill, I think, is is a certain patience and and I guess steadfastness too. Being able to um, pursue a problem over a period of time until you chase it down um, and not getting discouraged and continuing to press forward. I think it takes a very long time, a very long, I mean years and decades, okay, to actually make a contribution. Not six months. That's why I say cleverliness is not a good virtue. <laughs> Steadfastness, patience, perseverance. What would you say to encourage a student to choose economics as a I never try to encourage anybody to do economics. I just show them economics. And I say, if this appeals to you, then, then, then do it. Yeah. Uh, who is your economist of preference? So I think of myself as having ancestors that I've chosen. Um, and there's two sets of them, one in the American Institutionalist School and one in the British Central Banking School. So in the one hand, it's people like Alan Young, um, Hyman Minsky, uh, people like that. And on the British side, people like Badgett, Hawtrey, um, Charles Goodhart. What is the paper or book you wish you had written? Oh, the next one. <laughs> My next book, yes. What's That's the one I wish I had written by now, yes. What's your yes. country of origin? <laughs> uh, I'm from the US. What are the three main economic problems of your country? We have a lot of political problems, which are economic problems too. Um, so they're political economic problems. I think we, we, we need to do something about health care. I would put health care number one. Um, if we don't do anything about health care, everything else is going to be in, in trouble. I think education um, is in fact another serious economic problem. And I think banking. Um, our, our banking system, which is actually in a certain way because we issue the dollar, is the world banking system, um, that we could do a big favor to the rest of the world by getting some control over this banking system. And which policy would provide the first step to solve these problems? Well, for the first ones that I said, in health, health, uh, health, education, and banking. So health, I think it's all actually about following the money, okay? The reason our health care system is so messed up, it has a lot to do with the fact that it's financed on the wage bill. And getting this, separating these things out, I think, is the, is the key. Um, and, the, and one of the reasons our education system is screwed up is because primary and secondary education is financed on local property taxes. And so I think that's also sort of, it creates wrong incentives and, and we see the consequence of that. For our banking, um, the, I have a lot of proposals about this. Um, I, I have said uh, here, here in Trento that the future, uh, that, that the, the dollar funding system is the world funding system. Um, and that what we need to do is to, uh, is to really fundamentally revamp our regulatory structure, which was designed around banks, which I call Jimmy Stewart banks, um, from the American film It's a Wonderful Life, um, imagining that these banks are little local things where retail deposits are funding uh, retail mortgages, and this is just not the world we live in anymore.